Okay guys, I think I screwed up my timer there. Maybe I added a, a day when I crossed the day. Uh, I'm in a different time zone, so I tried to adjust. If for some reason it wasn't working, I think I added a day instead of adding an hour. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's ignore that. Um, and skip straight to what we're doing today. Uh, I don't know when the last time I streamed... Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could probably afford to do that. Uh, the last time I streamed actual development might have been last month. I don't remember. Um, we did a quick two-parter over a weekend where it was just uh, getting asteroids working and then uh, just kind of fine-tuning the, co the collision. It's a really crappy collision. It's Manhattan distance, which is like the laziest way of doing a distance calculation. Oh, shut up, Shane. You, you, you know, that, that's not what I mean. Um, actually, let me... I mean, it, it works though. Here, let's 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 get the game back up and running, and then we'll uh, we'll see. Cause cause it was just like a quick and dirty thing. Ah, uh, Pona, if you told me to do that like <laughs> an hour ago, you could have talked me into it. But now I've just kind of committed to to doing programming stuff. Okay, I got my retro link controller. Hooked up. I wasn't aware you key um uh, or er, 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 masters. I forget how you. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not operating a motor vehicle at the moment. I can't. I can't uh, program and drive at the same time. However, I am. Uh, I am traveling right now. So instead of normally being in the in Florida, which is. Uh, my, my normal location, I'm in the middle of a move and I'm doing kind of like an extended lazy move where I'm just kind of hanging around in different places. Today I'm in Kentucky. So, different time zone. There we go. Ah, crap. There we go. See? Manhattan Collision works just fine. At least for certain... certain... Per, uh, Okay, yes. Um, I, I am technically homeless at the moment. Yes, that is true, but that is largely by choice this time. Uh, <laughs> hey, you see, Manhattan, Manhattan's fine. Like, if, if, if you want to get, like, cheap collision with a bunch of objects that are basically small enough to not matter, works. There we go. Oh, crap. Yeah, like, y you could do... Here's the problem, though, is uh, for, for everyone that doesn't know what's going on with Saturn, uh, the Saturn works entirely on more or less integer-based stuff. So there's no floating point unit, so you can't really rely on, you know, enhanced division modules or anything like that, because the only division module that the Saturn has is for fixed points. Fixed points work basically the same way as integers, except different. Uh, but as far as computational speed, the same speed, and the problem with the division uh, module is that it takes forever to retrieve a result from it, like 40-some uh, cycles or something like that. So instead, if you can avoid doing 1 over z's type stuff, which is the standard of what you're doing whenever you're doing some sort of calculation like distance, uh, you, you should try to get away with it. Or even worse, like a square root. I'm not even sure how the square root works. Yeah. So, uh, the, the game that I'm working on right now that I'm trying to focus on is essentially the same kind of gameplay control scheme as Asteroids. I'm just going to try and add some more stuff to it. Well, here's the thing. The Saturn isn't, like, highly parallelizable. It's, it's, it has, like, eight different processors, but they're all different in that uh, only two of them are, like, general processors that you can use for whatever you want. And trying to parallelize it doesn't really give you anything. Okay, maybe if, if it's a table, then it's quick. Yeah. Okay, that's enough of that. So, uh, we, we acknowledge that the game is functional at the moment. Just 
So if it's Newton Rapson, then that means it's it's not a table. It's a uh, it's iterative, right? So it's an iterative solution. That's that's slow. That's a slow solution. This RTX is great. I'm like drinking water and putting stuff on the desk, and I don't think you guys can actually hear it. If you if you weren't here for the pre-show, uh, we we activated RTX voice on my um, on my stream. So this guy is like being able to, to to freaking. I think there's a bathroom going on, flushing in the background. You guys can't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> now with RTX voice. But one or two iterations uh, on a square root calculation is still a lot more expensive than, say, basic addition or multiplication. The beauty of Manhattan uh, distance is that it's literally just two absolute values summed together, and that's it. And if you have really small items, it's good enough. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to stick with it, but uh, for now, it works because I just want to move on. Uh, today is going to be programming light. Today, I'm going to try doing uh, just mo mostly design work. So normally I do the design work off stream where like I come up with the math I want to use and then I have like kind of a game plan to go into the stream to do it. That's how I did Forsaken Plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, seriously though, there is stuff going on in the background right now. Like uh, I'm, I'm in a hotel room. You can kind of hear kids in the hall sometimes. Uh, the bathroom is being used. There's doors opening and closing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much you guys can hear it, but this RTX stuff is actually kind of funny. Because uh, uh, Shane, I listened to that clip. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna crinkle. I'm crinkling a bag right now. I don't know if you can pick that up. Let's see how close I can get to it. I don't know if RTX filtered most of that out, but it's uh, it was kind of funny because he, he, he Sh Shane, I listened to the clip that you had on stream. It was like night and day when I had my my fans on and off. That's hilarious. I love it. Yeah, because uh, if I, it says it's AI based, so obviously I'm not going to be able to predict what a neural network is actually doing. But my naive approach to filtering would be uh, some sort of 4A stuff where you would take away the the frequencies outside the normal voice range. So a bag crinkling would be a much higher frequency than you'd expect to have my voice to be. So you can just safely filter those out. But yeah, it's 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 the GPU doing something with some sort of neural network or something that's been trained well, and uh, as a result, magic. Okay, so I promised design work and stats. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna steal from the good, uh, you know, some, some good examples. Now, um, you can have your opinions on whether or not Pokemon is a good game or a fairly balanced game, but. The way that they do their damage calculations has gone over so many iterations at this point. Or I don't know how many iterations it's gone through, but it's basically settled as a way to kind of like make a a fair competitive game game mechanic. Oh, okay. And you can see how they're doing things. Uh, I, I've had different experiments with different th uh, ways of of doing the math for these kinds of statistical things. Uh, Actually, let's let's pull up Forsaken Plane and see how Forsaken Plane did stuff. Because I forget what my damage calculation was for that. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and go over my Forsaken Plane project. Um, damage. There we go. Damage.c. So, let me see. Who actually does that? There's a damage... Update all damage entities. No, I don't need that. Draw damage. Nope. Don't need to move it. Damage character. Okay. Okay, so the way I did it in Forsaken Plane was kind of D20 uh, inspired, where I do uh, an attack check for... Uh, a, I have a defense that, that's the accumulation of your armor plus some various things that you have on you. Uh, and then there is an attack roll uh, applied to it. And if you exceed the attack roll, then um, you reduce the, the number of damage, but the damage is, is calculated pretty simply. It's just a dice roll plus uh, a default amount 
and default amount is uh, essentially character statistic dependent. I mean, d does StarCraft even have uh, variable damage, or is it just every unit has a fixed fixed amount of damage? Because I'm talking about wanting to do a sophisticated statistical system where you know you have defensive attributes and offensive attributes and stuff like that. But I think with StarCraft, I think everyone's stats are well uh, represented by their hit point count, right? Anyway, um, the, way, the way I did, did, did damage in Forsaken Plane... I don't know what v Varov, Varovki... Uh, okay. I'll look it up while you explain it to me. Craft damage calculation. Okay, so there's there's modifiers to it. So uh, there's like a fixed amount of damage, and you can have an enhancement or or reduction based off of uh, matchups. And a lot of uh, RTSs do this, uh, where you have, like, let's say your swordsman is especially effective against an archer, but not as effective against a pikeman or something like that, or, or, or a horse-mounted knight. But as far as a robust statistical base thing where, like, a unit can level up and get uh, higher stats, I don't, know, I don't know how much of that there is. Yeah, actually, I'm, I am trying to cop a lot of EVE Online. Uh, I don't know if if I can like directly take their math though. Eve online damage calculation. There we go. Because what Eve does is actually uh, really, really sophisticated compared to what the Saturn would probably be capable of doing for a large number of targets. Uh, so not only does Eve do um, a chance to hit that falls off with distance. Uh, there's also a an angular uh, component to it. So they have uh, an angular velocity that creates this differential that makes it harder to hit the target. So the faster you're going transverse to the person that's firing at you, the less likely you are to get hit. Hey, Birdie, uh, welcome back. Uh, I, I don't even know what everyone's time zone is anymore because my time zone is screwed up so i'm surprised to see some people i'm not sure if i should be surprised to see everyone but uh th thanks everyone for showing up today we're mostly just talking about stats and how i'm going to design uh you know like a statistical system to make it so that it makes sense to go after different uh ship parts and stuff i'm going to make a, a large table of different items and inventory for your ship to stat it out okay so it's only 11 13 in florida But yeah, so so Eve, Eve takes in a lot of things into account to try and simulate uh, battle conditions in you know a three dimensional environment, where it, it's it's not it's not too far off from naval combat, where you know the higher your transversal speed is, the harder it is to hit. Uh, I don't know why the computers in Eve aren't supposed to automatically account for that or something, but uh, whatever, it, it it makes it for a good game. I don't know that I need to take all this into account because I think. Whatever you shoot, if it hits, it hits. I don't want to take attack rolls into account. So, uh, in Forsaken Plane, it was like a D20 system. Kind of like how Morrowind did things where even if you hit... What you see yourself hitting doesn't mean you actually hit. For Void Skipper, I want to do... Kind of like how Oblivion did it, where it's more, you know... Confirm your hits by eye. If you, if you know you hit, you know you hit. So, this chance to hit stuff, we can go ahead and skip. And after that, we can go to damage calculation. And again, Eve does this crazy stuff where it takes into account your your angular velocity, your transverse speed, uh, turret tracking statistics, and stuff like that. And it actually modifies damage based off of that. And there's a logic to that, but trying to force the Saturn to do all this crap, it doesn't seem fun or realistic for anyone. Uh, so what I'm going to do is have damage very lightly randomized. So maybe a small dice roll or something like that. 
uh, plus whatever your initial stats are going to be. And what I need to do is I need to build up uh, the stat sheet. So what, what we're going to do is I think we're going to create a new a new header. Well, wait, I don't need this anymore. We're going to create a new header with a new struct. So what, what's a what's a good struct that we can steal from? Uh, Roid, maybe? There we go. So let's steal this. In fact, let's steal like all of this. Make a new thing. And this, we're gonna, uh, what are we building right now? I think we're gonna build a ship. And then we're gonna have the ship uh, contain certain properties. Yeah, yeah. So, so that that that's Eve is trying really hard to be a good simulation of what it would be like to be a captain of a ship. But the, the the lore of Eve is that it's all hooked up in your brain, right? So, if it's hooked up in your brain, your your brain is telling the ship what to do, and the ship should have like AI or or crew or something like that to compensate. But even still, uh, nothing is perfect, and there's always going to be a little bit of drift. And yes, the the ships can do micro maneuvers or something like that with thrusters. To try and avoid it. Uh, it's a it's a lot of work. It's a lot of math for something without floating points and fast division to do. Yeah, I played a lot of Leave myself. I played a lot of the incursions when they were out. Uh, the by the lore says that the ships have crew. So all those windows with lights on, those are actual people in the lore of Eve. So if you get your ship blown up, y you are potentially uh, negligently manslaughtering several hundreds of people. In lore, they have crew, yes. Uh, as far as uh, what it means, like they, they never charge you for it. Like there's no legal repercussions in Eve for that, despite the fact that Eve has legal repercussions for a lot of stuff. Like, you can get in trouble for selling slaves, but if you just scuttle your boat, and your boat has like a hundred crew in it, nobody says anything to you. Yeah, I know, it's it's like, it's kind of, it, it's kind of funny how it works out, but you know, whatever. Um, now I'm trying to think, do I want, for the ship, do I want it to actually, like, replicate an actual ship, or do I want a class of equipment that acts as a, a parent object to grab from? So I can have a table of all these different equipments, and I just say, okay, equipment ID 47, and I just copy those stats in. And that might be a better option. So maybe I should start doing uh, a hull. Uh, And then I can just make, um, or I'll just call it uh, item. Well, yeah, uh, Mass Effect is 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 a, a strict role playing game, and and you're meant to, you know, have a relationship with all the characters that you're able to talk to. <laughs> Planet side too. I played Planet Side 1 a little bit when it was still kind of a thing in the, in the tail end of it. I was always bad at it. Okay, let's give it uh, an ID. Int uh, ID. Oh, let's also give it uh, a type. So, oh, let's, let's save this first. This is going to be item.h in Void Skipper. So type, um, let's see, type of item, and then we'll just list out. There's a hole, there's a turret, uh, we want engine, defensive, System 
I mean, what else can we have in here? Um, what, what other classes of items would you expect to see on a starship? Here's, here's the thing, though. Planet Side 2, I feel like, was a lot more difficult to get into, or they, the, the skill curve was a lot steeper for new players and older players, compared to Planet Side 1, where it's just smaller maps, more condensed, a lot more chaotic, but everyone can jump in anytime they want. Planet Side 2, you could meander around for like an hour before seeing anyone, and then die and have to go back to much further away, because they had a bigger world. Ammo. Okay, yeah, you're right. Uh, turrets... Uh, let's do two is uh, ammo. And and so you'd have like a missile turret and then you'd have ammunition for the turret. Yeah, but at least in, in Plant Side 1, even if you're completely worthless, you can always take like a mosquito or something and dive bomb into the enemy and at least take out one guy before you die. Okay. Turret, ammo, engine, defensive systems. And defensive systems are like shields, uh, electronic countermeasures... Uh, chaff. I don't know what else you would have. You know, hull plating. I mean, let's let's just go ahead and just steal from sci-fi at this point. Like, Voyager had a blade of plating and regenerative blade of plating or whatever that was. They had, all, like, a hump, bunch of different warp engine type drives. Comms. Oh, uh, you know what? That's, that's not a bad idea. So, comms can be, like, uh... Yeah, that's what it was, a blade of armor. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, Eric, you should have uh, you, you should go on YouTube and look up the the Voyager uh, photon torpedo count and see it go into the negatives. Uh, since signal processing, that's what I'm going to do. And signal processing would be things like uh, sensors, communications. Uh, I guess, I guess that'd be kind of uh, maybe we can put tractors under here too. Tractor beams. Oh, it's going to become much more than Asteroids clone. Um, oh, AI. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to uh, do the um, computational stuff. AI. Yeah. So so the idea of this is going to be like a full-fledged uh, free roam RPG type deal where you like go around to different systems and do stuff. Now, shields would go under defensive systems. So this would be like shields... Chaff, armor, e ECM, engine. That would be. Uh, I don't. I don't want to use the word impulse because that's like clearly a Star Trek thing. But just uh, thrust and uh, warp. Thing is, I need to come up with a better name than warp because I'm already ripping off a lot of Star Trek here. Tractor beams. Um, Comms, sensors. Hmm. Yeah, I know, but it's like... Um, I need to come up with a term for it that's going to be consistent, because this is going to be the same setting as Scenario. Uh, so I, I, want, I want to have like a consistent science fiction lexicon that I can keep returning to without having to keep making stuff up. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. So let's do uh, sublight. So thrust is just, uh, you know, kind of for rotations. Sublight would be like actual linear speed. And uh, FTL drives would be, I guess, for system travel. Which means uh, we're also going to want for on top of the engines. Seven, six, five. We're going to want 
uh, capacitors and batteries. We're going to want a capacitor. And we're, we're going to want an energy bank. Yeah. So just call it the energy type deal. So we'll do um, mass drivers, missiles, lasers. Uh, mass drivers. Uh, so for, for mass drivers, a a anything projecting mass forward, even including a particle stream, would count as a mass driver. Rail guns, stuff like that. Missiles are self-explanatory, so are lasers. I don't know what other kind of, uh, maybe like electronic, you know, uh, EMP stuff. Yeah, so EMP jamming, uh, you could have a directed EMP op coming out of a turret, right? Hull is just the ship itself. Yeah, so, so that, that would also fall under the EMP. The thing with that, uh, Eric, I think, I think that would be more classified uh, by, by these guys. So a mass driver is pretty much always directional. Uh, missiles, uh, I, I would say pretty much are almost always guided, or at least we can label them guided or not guided. Uh, lasers, similarly guided or not guided. An EMP, I think, would have to be uh, guided or something like that in order for it to be effective, or it would be like a cone of effect. I'm not sure if you're making a... Uh, what, what, what was the name of that Mel Brooks movie? Spaceballs. That's a Spaceballs joke. I'm not sure if you realize that, because I think you're a little bit younger than Spaceballs. Well, I mean, the, the turret is just like a mounting point. So what I'm going to have... Okay. So let's, let's go into paint. And... This is what I mean by like the, the work of design kind of like not being a lot of programming, programming light, because a lot of this is just deciding how you want to do things and trying to figure out ahead of time whether or not it's going to work, because I'm about to spend a lot of time implementing it just to find out it's not great, which is what happened to me on Forsaken Plane uh, when I decided, hey, uh, I didn't like how this was playing. I got I to gotta reinvent this eventually somehow. So you got your spaceship. And then we're going to have um, mounting points. So let's say this guy is going to have three turret mounting points. And then we'll give him uh, two armor mounting points here and here. We'll give him one. Oh, crap. No. We'll give him one um, thruster point. Here, this is going to be the engine. And then we can start doing things like, uh, you know, additional mount points. Actually, I think every ship is probably going to need uh, three mounting points. It's going to need, well, at least a minimum of three mounting points. It's going to need uh, one for sublight one for FTL, and one for um, for thrusters. And maybe the FTL, well, F FTL one can be optional because maybe we can have like small fighters that are stuck in system that you can, you know, eventually trade up. So maybe I start you off with something with only a thruster slot and a uh, sublight slot, which means I probably need to break up the categories here if I really want to limit it like that. Uh, th that's a bit beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do, because that would require a lot of child AIs, and that has a potential of growing way out of control. So I'll do uh, thrusters for seven. 
And then eight is going to be sublight engines. And then nine is going to be warp. I'll, I'll do FT, FTL core. It's still blatantly Star Trek ripoff, but whatever. Um, so basically we have... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different kinds of mounting points. So the generic mounting point, you can put whatever system you have, like you put your AI or whatever, and maybe, you know, you don't have automated turret firing until you have a good enough AI. And uh, I'll figure out a stat system for that eventually. Then you have, you know, your defensive mounting points, you have your attack mounting points, and you have, you know, the, your th one of three different kinds of uh, thrust mounting points. And what you do is, in the game, you would eventually just go around, destroy a ship, steal that item, and incorporate it into your own via your inventory. N none of that is actually getting done tonight. Uh, what, what's, what is going to get done tonight is the basic damage calculation based off of this. So I will initialize a ship with a certain uh, set of, of items. Well, it's it's more like about typing, um, like all unguided unguided turret points would all be pointed forward all the time, but uh, as far as uh, guided guided uh, ammunition, you know, like guided missiles or guided lasers or whatever, uh, what matters is that they're mounted and then that that thing takes over because I'm just going to make it so that you can't be shot by your own uh, bullets or whatever. If this game expands far enough and becomes popular enough, then I will think about doing that kind of scaling. But for, for right now, I'll be happy if I just get like a functional game out of it. Okay, so we have the item type, the uh, item ID. So this is a unique classifier among type. And then uh, we're going to have to have uh, several stats. So we're going to do offensive stats. So now I'm trying to think about what kind of offensive stats you could have. Um, hmm. So, crap. You know what? Let, let's 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 hold off on that. Right. Let's let's do some base stats. Base stats. We're gonna have things like mass. Um, what else is important when you're when you're considering putting something on your spaceship? Uh, energy draw. Uh, required uh, computational power. That's what your AI's does. Let's see what else we'd have. Now we can go off and do offensive stats, I think, and then I'll just I'll just add things in as I go along. Actually, these guys should all be fixed. Now that I think about it. Quality rating. You mean you mean like wear and tear? Now I, I'm I'm going to do strictly one slot, one item because I don't want to have to do that kind of inventory management. I don't think anyone wants to be able to do, you know, I, I need to fit this across seven slots or something like that, and I only have five. Yeah, so that's that's uh here. Let me actually label these. Mass added to ship. Energy requirements, and then um, oh, let me let me call the CPU draw. CPU requirements. So if you have like an auto targeting system, you need a like a computer strong enough to actually do the the calculation. 
Okay, offensive stats. Uh, this is only going to be applicable to turrets and ammo, but there's going to be... Uh, Let me see. Launch. Um... Okay, launch, and that's just going to be a launch speed. So this is going to be like a forward momentum. And then I guess we can take the speed, multiply by mask, and get some sort of uh, mo momentum uh, operator going that we can just uh, use to do a damage calculation. Um, what else can we have? So we have mass for the mass drivers. We got launch speed. Uh, we have uh, yield, and that's uh, explosive yield. Uh, let me see what else is there. EMP. Yeah, let's just call that EMP. This is going to be uh, electrical interference, uh, strength, and I'll have to figure out what exactly that means when I start implementing it. I think we're going to skip that for today. Yield. Oh, whoops. But what other kinds? What do we have? We have EMPs. We got lasers. Lasers. Uh, no mass for their actual ammo, I guess is what you'd call it, or... I'm not even sure if I even want ammo for that, I just make a... Do like Eve and just make a crystal that doesn't deteriorate. Or some sort of uh, gain medium. And all their damage would have to be... Uh, I guess, electrical interference strength. I, and I, you know what? Eve had this too and I totally forgot about it, but... Uh, Therm. Yeah. So, uh, we'll just do... Uh, directed energy. So, we'll just call that directed energy intensity. Because the laser is not going to intense, inten, intensity. There we go. Because Okay, so laser is not going to cause like some sort of electrical interference with whatever you shoot at it, but it can melt something. So yeah, directed energy or that energy disruption aspect can do that. And so the offensive stats are only actually going to be pulled in and relevant when we do uh, turrets and ammo. Uh, no, not yet. Every keyboard is slightly different. This one has a 10 key, which is nice. But uh, it puts weird things on functions. Like home is on a function key. I don't know why, it just is. Uh... Oh, you know what? So, for energy, uh, the engines can have negative energy requirements. That'd be hilarious. That's great. Okay. Yeah, this kind of just works out. Yeah, so directed energy in... Ah, crap. Intensity. There we go. Now let's do defensive stats. And defensive stats will come into play from the hull along with... Uh, defensive systems. So we'll have to do um, hardness, and that's just how well you resist momentum. And there's uh, reflectivity. And that's uh, reflex uh, directed energy. Uh, insulation. And this should help with uh, EMP. Resists EMP. And yield. How, how do you resist yield? So I guess armor thickness.
Yeah, so shield, a shield array or a shield item would contribute to your, I would assume, your reflectivity and your insulation, and it very, very minorly it, it, uh, assist with your hardness and your thickness. I, don't, I, I need to come up with a better name for thickness. Like, how do you resist an explosion? So hardness would just be like how well you can just bounce, uh, have a bullet bounce off or something like that. But for how 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 do you shield against an explosion? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's I, I can just call it like that. Yeah, so I'll just do it. Uh, launch defense. Yield, defense, EMP, defense, and D energy, defense, resist, explosions. Well, I mean, it, mass is going to be a component of uh, the, the uh, mass driver kind of calculation of damage and maybe partially with the missile as well but uh, I, I I don't I don't want to have to try and bring mass into everything because then you're just it, it feels kind of weird to me because you could have a very light uh, a very light but very strong shell or a protective shield around you like uh, like imagine like a uh, hundred pounds of steel versus a hundred pounds of wood trying to shield yourself from an explosion. I mean, one is going to put up more give than another. So we have base stats, offensive stats, defensive stats, things that provide energy draw or CPU draw will, uh, will have that negative values in there. So you can, so you can handle that. So essentially, the first thing that gets calculated in after you put in the hull is your energy systems and your computational systems and then things will start getting added in and once you once you exceed a positive number on that you won't be able to add any more items of that type so that that feels okay let, let me make sure to add items to the save right, item.c to the make file. So item. Okay, well, let's just copy one of my other C, C files and just uh, move it around a little bit. So for now, it's just going to be blank. Okay, and then uh, opponent, actually, I think you can help me figure out. Well, uh, hull integrity. Uh... Oh, crap. Oh, crap. No, I, I don't need to do that yet. Uh, I will need to eventually, but for now, I don't need to do it. Uh, hull integrity, I would say, is just. Uh... Oh, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. These are all damage modifiers, but I need something to track how much actual, uh, you know. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's just add that. Uh, fixed. Integ. So that's going to be uh, integrity of uh, item hit points. Well, I'm not doing a, a straight port of, of EVE Online. I'm just going to do everything on the single, on a single thing. Um, so, yeah, th that's how EVE does it. I'm going to simplify it. The shields will just reduce the amount of damage incoming, but uh, you will essentially just take damage to the entirety of your ship. And certain items, I guess, could could help you with your overall hull integrity. But for the most part, it's just going to be defined by the actual hull.
I'm 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 not doing I'm not doing it like Eve. I'm going to be doing it like uh just like a, as a damage reduction. If you can't overcome damage reduction, then there's no damage. And I feel like that 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 should be good enough for what I'm going for. So so if someone's shooting you with a pea shooter, they're not trying to do one damage over and over again until you they they ablate your hole away. Uh, the pea shooter is not going to do anything until it gets something strong enough to actually pierce the armor hardness or whatever we're calling it. Batteries and capacitors are there in order to power the items that need powered. So if 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 an hour if if an item has a large energy draw, and you don't have the uh, if you don't have the capacitor to hold it, yeah. So requirements of usage, yeah, exactly. So it's just about gearing up gearing up your ship. So the idea is is very similar to Eve, where you want a bigger ship with a greater energy and CPU requirements so that you have the ability to carry all this stuff and you have the ability to have, let's say, a larger engine that can move around the larger mass of the ship and larger mass of the uh, the items you're trying to equip. Yeah, yeah, all these things are just slots. These are just slots that to put onto the ship. Oh, that's the other thing. I have to actually come up with uh, slots. Ship only. Can I just do short? Or is that the same thing as character? I'll just do int for now, because I don't think I'm going to run into memory requirements issues. So it's going to be um, slot turret. Turret slots. And then we're going to have a slot for uh, what? That's 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 the number of turret slots that you have. So we have turret slots. Each turret slot is going to have its own ammo slot implied, so I don't need to keep track of that. Um, defensive system slots. Thruster slots. This is going to be sublight engine slots. And then we're going to have uh, FTL for. FTL slots, and then slots for G for general slots. Okay, um, to utilize items, I think we're going to need a ship class now. So let me. Oh, I labeled that wrong. This is not the roid slot, this is an item struct. Ship.h. And let me save a copy as uh, ship.c. Include it. 
Okay, so the ship struct. So what we're gonna want to do is uh, redo basic status vector or status uh, status flags. If it's alive, um, what do we want? All integrity. This could be int. Integ, int, integ, max. So we could just pre calculate that after equipping stuff and redo the calculations. Capacity. Now I can just do this based off of calculations from parts, so I don't need to keep track of that. Energy. Here's the thing, all this can be summed, so I don't need to do that either. I don't need to keep track of energy or AI. What do I need to keep track of? I need to keep track of uh, slots. So I need multiple arrays. So with um, with the slot tracking, I need to be able to have. Well, here's the thing: I, I could do it so that I can pre preempt uh, all these things and say, okay, maximum of eight slots per type or something like that by design. So I, I already know the size of all these um, all these arrays, or I could try to dynamically allocate them. Thing is, I hate dynamic allocation. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I, I want I want the items to be able to provide more than one function. So for the shields, I want the shields to not only provide um, you know resistance to directed energy. I also want to have a minor benefit against say things like yield. So it's kind of like how how it, how it works in Star Trek, you know. Oh 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 oh! Quality factor. That's what you meant by quality. Oh, I agree totally. I actually had a, a feature like that planned for Free Second Plane. So what it was is I had a um, a a blacksmith origin for each item if I was going to generate items. So the blacksmith origin would be something with like, okay, you have a table of like 50 blacksmith names. Each of them gives a certain bonus to a certain stat and maybe sometimes take away a certain bonus from a certain stat. But I, 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 like, uh, I like how you're thinking here. Quality factor. Okay, good idea, Ben. I, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, this is just a multiplication factor. So, um, let's say if you have a quality factor of one, maybe it reduces the mass a little bit, it reduces the energy draw, the CPU draw a little bit, and increases the damage a little bit. And that, that can all be handled with, uh, you know, a basic multiplication calculator. So we have items, uh, shit, we have alive, hull integrity, slot tracking, let's say, uh, just go crazy and say max 10 for each slot, so I don't have to keep track of, uh, dynamic memory allocation and freeing stuff.
turret, defense, 10, Okay, so we get initialize. well, we don't have to initialize anything, but I mean, okay, well, maybe we do. So we'll just initialize everything as like minus one for not available and zero for empty. But like I said tonight, I'm just going to try and get this basic functionality working. Oh, what was that? So I'm gonna make ammo not consumable. So you just buy an ammo type and you just, I guess you have replicators or whatever. That's just whatever technology you're using. And so you don't have to keep buying new ammo because I don't wanna to have to keep track of that. You know what? I think I can get a very, very quick uh, asteroid uh, test of this going on. So let's just do uh, hull integrity. Integ. So let's see, uh, Roid, 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 where do I put Roid? Roid C. When we create the Roid, We can also create uh, the integrity. There we go. And we'll just have the integrity copy the size because that kind of makes sense for an asteroid. I mean, really, the appropriate way of handling this would be to make Roid a type of ship. But uh, this is already working right now and I can kind of work backwards after I'm done with this. Draw Roids, Roid Physics. So wait, what handles the, um, oh, I have bullet, that's right. Let's do stats. And we'll copy the stats over from this guy. So then when we do the physics on the bullet onto the, um, on the roid, there we go. Since so we kill roids, we're going to hit roids.
So let's do uh, damage roid. Okay, so we're going to take the bullets. Uh, for now, the bullets are just going to be... What are the good bullets going to be? Do they give the roids any defensive stats at all? No, I guess not. Okay, that's fair. Like the, I'll just pretend that their hit points account for their their entire st structural integrity. So, create bullet, draw bullet, physics bullet. There we go. I oh, will take these guys. Oof. Copy and pasting can be ugly. Oh yeah, I saw it, Shane. Thanks. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and stay on for for long enough to uh, to try and get this thing done at least. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Oh. Yeah, so, okay. We're gonna do the Roid's Integrity. Integ minus equals the sum of all the damage um, attributes that we can give it to it. Um, yeah, okay, so, let's reverse this, this logic a little, a little bit, because I was assuming all bullets kill the asteroid uh, no matter what, and now we're giving asteroids essentially hit points. So let's add in another check here. This is if um, the integrity drops below, equal to or below zero. Now, before I go and do something stupid, let's just check. The integrity is an integer, the damages are not, so I have to shift everything. So we're shifting it right to 16 places to turn it into an integer. All right. Still want to shrink the bullet. Okay, in this case, now that the bullets have a damage potential on them, the player defined by player.h now the player needs to have a a ship okay so the ship will give the player all the stats it needs and the player can then oops
Eastern ship. And for now, the ship is just there to uh, to tell us the stats of, of what we're putting together. So, we're currently, how do I handle making a bullet? I create a bullet. And create a bullet is handled over here. So this will generate a bullet at the location I specify with the velocity specified. Yeah. Now, okay, we need to basically go back and inject the new logic backwards through all the stuff we just made. So, we have create a bullet being called by bullet when it should probably be called by player. Player will generate a new bullet. So maybe I should do a shoot function. Void shoot turret turret uh, T. Um, okay. So we'll shoot a turret out of a certain turret number. And assuming a turret even exists, we will uh, be able to generate a new bullet. Generates new bullet from existing turret on ship, on player ship. Now I think about it, this uh, is a ship function and not a player function. Okay, here we go. So, um, if uh, turret number is less than zero, or turret number is greater than nine, we can safely return without doing anything. bounds and then we can also have uh, let me do a return statement at the end uh, what else do we want instead of not only being out of bounds but if the ID doesn't match bad ID so Oh, the item. Is not item? Is it ship? Ship. Uh, let's call this the shooter. Shooter dot. What? Turn. No shooter arrow. Turret. This is going to be a pointer. And this will be a uh, turret number. Is less than zero. That means there is no turret equipped there. Which 
generate a bullet. Now I have to figure out how I'm going to call all these items with I these item IDs. I'm going to have to have a master list for every class. Um, hey, Pony, are you still there? Because uh, I got a question about how you can initialize structs easily. Item. Uh, Hallmaster. Okay. Well, issue's good enough. So. Let's say I wanted to initialize a whole bunch of structs at once in like a list. How, how compactly can I do that? Well, no, no, not, not just like starting everything at zero. Like I want to like enumerate in a list all the properties of each struct in this list hard coded. Let's call this an extern, or can I call it an extern in this context, or is it? No, it's not extern. Oh, maybe it is. Hey, why do we have lyrics? Yeah, that's exactly what I want, opponent. Just hard-coded, enumerated data. So, let me... Crap, where is it? Oh, it's going to pick up any other items. There we go. Extern, item, hallmaster. So hallmaster, first entry, is going to be... enumerated values for all these things. So is it as simple as saying, okay, this guy is a zero? Classifier zero. Quality zero. Mass. I don't know, just call the mass like a... Uh, Ten shifted left sixteen times. Integrity. Roid integrity is that. So, f uh, crap. This should be int. Yeah, there. Integrity should be int. Ah, I was afraid of that. Okay, so let's let's just check real quick then. 
So, um, enumerating a struct. That's probably not the way you say that. So, no, no, it's, it looks like it's kind of the way I did it. Yeah, yeah, look, look. So it's um, one item, comma, next item. Well, no, it's, the brackets don't really match up on this one, so maybe this is not the best example. Just try C initializing array of structs. So, yeah, it should be as simple as just listing all these things like this. Wait, is this is this legal? Doing this? If I could do that, that kind of makes my life a little bit easier. I mean, yeah, okay. Let's, let's um, let's start from the beginning then, because it makes it easier to. Well, actually, at first, let me see how you enumerate. Okay, open the bracket and then bracket for each person. Okay. So it's, it's, it's exactly what I was doing, except I'm trying to do it, uh, trying to do it the hard way. So they're doing it index dot, uh, index dot variable, right? So this is equal to zero. But then how do you separate multiple values of the array? Comma value. Okay, so comma separated. So then this should be the next step. Just copy this. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, oh, okay. There's some keyboard shortcut I'm still not familiar with that sometimes screws up my lines for me, and I don't want it to do that. Okay, so let me just keep track of everything. So, mass, let's call that 10, shifted left 16, integrity, call it 10, and you draw. Zero, but shifted left 16, so I know what I'm doing. Left 16. And then what's left? Uh, a bunch of slots, and... I'll define them as I go.
So I'll give myself one turret slot. And then launch has to be fixed. So let me just copy this, because this could be the rest of the whole thing. Okay, and this last guy is equal to zero, shifted left to 16, and how do I end the line? Oh, okay, it's already ended. So this is ship zero. And let me just get myself started with chip one, just in case I don't uh, remember how to do this later. So we have Hullmaster. Um, let's go ahead and also get uh, Turret Master. And he just has one in everything. But that one is affixed. So launch yield MP and direct energy should all be one. Give him one mass, zero additional integrity. I'll just give him one. Okay, so that's turret, and we should also get. Um, Turret Master and All Master. It's two. One. Do I really need to specify how many there are? I could just leave it blank, right? Just add as I go. There should be another problem is if I keep letting this expand a whole bunch of times, am I going to run out of room? Like, will, will it refuse to compile because I just have too many things loading up? Okay. Well, before anything, let's just try to compile this thing and make sure it still runs. Yeah, there's always a problem. So ship.h31.
Uh oh. Bullet.c146. Okay, so, um... Calculate damage for the bullet. It's gonna be let's see. Turret ID is equal to this, and then ammo ID is equal to this. So let me see. Ship is here. Okay, so storing that. All right. Oh, we're gonna have to, let me see. This is including ship. Ship needs to include item now. So, okay. We probably need to uh, grab everything from here. This is going to be equal to Turret Master. Turret ID. Dot. Uh, what's launch? It's la launch is still just launch, right? And the same from Ammo Master. So now this is going to be yield, EMP, directed energy, oh, okay, and now the bullet is going to have to carry all this information with it. So when we create the bullet, There we go. We're gonna need all that extra stuff.
Oh, I already had that. Crap. EMP and then direct energy. All right, and let's add that into the actual function. Create bullet here, okay. Info damage. This part just replace it with this. All right, we're getting there. A lot of like work to get up to this point, but. So, the ship should be able to shoot a turret based off of a pointer to the shooter and the turret number. In this case, it could be zero. The pointer to the shooter should be coming from player, and it should be... Where is it? Extern ship. Stern ship is the type. Let's call this player ship. So when I initialize this, what do I need to initialize? True. Ah, crap. Let's go back to what this thing said. Just dots. Dots are sufficient. Call that. This is eventually going to have to be uh, calculated, but for now, let's just call it 10. Well, here's an interesting thing. Uh, you know what? This is probably too much for me to try and handle like this. I'm going to just put into an initialization function. Reset player ship void function. Okay, reset player ship. Resets hull integrity and sets ship to alive.
There we go. And as I said before, this will eventually have to be reset to actually account for stuff. But for now, it's fine where it is. And now I'm probably going to need an initialized player. Let's call it init player ship. There we go. Initialize crap player ship sets initial values for player ship. Okay, good. Let's do the same thing we did before. This needs to return. However, this is also going to do. Now, opponent, assuming that you're still awake, can I simply do something like this? Two, three. So I want to initialize the, um, the, uh, whatchamacallit? Crap. Ah. No, I can't do this because it's because it's already kind of been initialized. So I need to. What I want to do is I want to mass set an array equal to a predefined array I'm about to find here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I want a quick and easy way of doing this, where I can just populate it like so. Sure I'll be asking Google just in case. But uh, C set entire array to values. So I want to assign, there we go, assign multiple values to array in C. That's after it's already been initialized. Oh, memory copy. Does memory copy work in the Saturn? Can I just do that? Okay. And they're saying using a static constant would be helpful. So this this is uh, an array that is a property of a struct that I want to be able to reinitialize using this function. 
to like a basic level. Short of just, you know, doing every entry manually. Yes, it is of a fixed size and a fixed location. So this is going to be int ter copy. And I guess I'm going to call, let me copy this thing over. So I wanted to place turret copy, copy it into turret. Oh, okay. I was going to try using memcopy, but I think I kind of like your way better because I feel like it's safer. Pointer is equal to... And this stuff... Uh, element zero. Okay, that's still kind of like a manual copy over it, isn't it? Why do I even need the pointer at that point? No, I guess it makes a... Uh... Wait, how does the pointer help me in this situation, though? It seems like I can just take the index and it directly address the index of the... of the item. Like, uh, like this. I equals zero, I less than 10, I plus plus. I could just do this. I is equal to tert copy I. So it, it, it kind of makes the tert pointer Yeah, but I, I need to redo the initialization for every thing, so... Because it's not just going to be this, it's going to be... Ammo copy... And then I'm going to want to be able to default it to different things for the different things down here. So it's going to be turret slots, ammo slots, there should be defense slots. Thruster slots, sublight slots, uh, 
FTL slots and uh, general slots. Okay, so we have ammo, defense, thruster, turret. I mean, I'm already, I'm already like knee deep into this implementation, so I might as well just finish it the same way. Sublight, FTL, and general. Reach is into sub. Um, just Gen, okay. Return. There we go. So we have initialized player ship. That's gonna go in main. Oh yeah, that's no longer necessary. Oops. Oh, I hope players uh, included in here. Yep. Okay. Good. And then reset player ship. Gonna go in there. We want the player to be able to shoot using that button press, so we need to create a shoot function. That shoot function should stem off of the ship shoot function. So they're creating the bullet. So we'll copy all these guys over. Which guy? Who are you talking about? Oh, is he, is he streaming? Uh, what's the 
Pylon doing here? What do you mean muted? How is he muted? I don't understand. So wait, he, he was accidentally streaming while muted, but... So he just screwed up? I thought, I thought he, like, someone manually muted him, like he was, uh, you know, censored by Blizzard or something like that. Huh. Oh, well. <sighs> okay. So that's good, man. We want to... We're not creating the bullet here. We tell the ship to shoot the turret, and shooting the turret creates the bullet. But it needs to shoot the turret at a location. Here. Owner. Like, all this stuff needs to be translated eventually, but I just want to get this working tonight. So the player can then shoot the turret of its own ship. Void player shoot. I mean, this is a really roundabout way of doing things because I'm having one function basically serve as a middleman for another function, and there's like two layers of that. So the owner I mean it, it is kind of late. It's later than I normally do this because I'm in a different time zone and obviously I think I'm sounding a bit tired on the stream. Okay. Zero size, size. But uh, like I said, I want to. I'm just trying, trying to finish this up, at least for posterity's sake, before I do anything. Joe, fix speed. Position should be the pointer to ship position. I mean, really, I should just be copying all this stuff. And then we have turret number zero. And the shooter should be a pointer to player ship. Really, that's what needs to happen when we create the bullet. Shoot. Okay, so the chain of command here is I press the button, it calls player shoot. Player shoot shoots the turret based off of the player ship, which should have been initialized before the game even started. And uh, shoot turret is a property of ship and we're telling it to shoot turret zero. It should already have been initialized to be a non-trivial turret, and that should create a bullet with all the relevant information in that bullet. Should function as normal. 
And then the physics for the bullet will take There it is. We'll take all the damage stats of the bullet, subtract it from the roid's integrity, and oh, oh, well, for your for your uh, gun collection. Okay, I'm just trying to think. I think I'm I'm definitely forgetting something. Like I let, let's just try compiling and see if even. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, I didn't like any of that. Okay, let's try to trace this back a little bit. So item 59. Item to H59. Wow, I did not like that. Let's remove that from the list. There we go. Sounds like you're just you're shooting too much, Pona. That's the problem. Okay, 59 here. Oh, this need to be there. I really hope that was everything. Nope. 61. Hullmaster. Yeah, I want Hullmaster initialized and declared external. That's the reason I wrote it like that. This is not a legal way of doing this. So this guy... No, not this guy. No, wait. Where was it? We found it earlier. Oh. Why wouldn't I extern it here? Where else would I extern it? It's the header. Ew. Oh, you know what I did? Here, here's what I need to do. I need to take all this crap, and copy it over here, and get rid of the externs. So let's here just extern and replace with nothing. There we go. That's fine. And then in the header, don't freaking uh, declare anything. <laughs> so many errors. From the top. Rand? I'm allowed to do that. Aren't I? Roid. Okay, Roid, do you ain't... No, you should be able to get Rand. Well, oh, don't worry about that crap. Excess elements and scalar initializer. Okay, so we're expecting... Oh, whoops. Turret copy is wrong. Where are you? Yeah, these are arrays. You know, you could do one of those um, muzzle loaders or whatever. I forget what they're called. Um, like the old style revolutionary guns where you can like literally just pour in black powder on the top. People actually hunt with those somehow. I mean, probably not successfully, but they do it. But I feel like, uh, I feel like if you start buying like ammo reloading equipment, you're going to start getting on some sort of Waco type watch list. Array index and non-array initializer. Item 15. It doesn't like this stuff. 
does not like what I'm doing here. Yeah, every time I do it, that, that, that's all it's complaining about is just that crap. I'm doing this exact crap and he doesn't like it. Yeah, sorry, I was just trying to figure out, like, if I take away this zero, will it actually work? Let's, let's try that. Yeah, these are both the same thing, so I can just um, find a replace real quick. Zero, replace with nothing. Save. Rerun. Yeah, I just didn't like that. <sighs> yeah, I shoot a bow, so I don't even know how to deal with what you guys are talking about. I don't have to buy uh, ammo too much, I just, you know, recover my arrows from the target. Aha! So this should be here, this should be here, there we go. Shipsy 29. These need to be integers. Getting sloppy. There's no way this actually works. Wow. Okay, well... Ah, crap. How did that work so fast? We definitely have at least like a no another hour of screwing up code before this should be working. I know, right? The, the asteroid clearly has hit points because I have to hit it that many times before it breaks up. I mean, yeah, this uh, Void Skipper has been surprisingly good to me because I've been having a few short streams that just kind of just work out and work out in a way that I really like. But you see how many how many bullets it takes just to shoot something, which means hit points are working. Obviously, this needs to be cleaned up. Uh, I need to be a little bit more intricate. I need to implement a menu system so you can actually change gear. But, uh, whoa, oh, okay. I'm actually getting better in my own game, which is a first. It is, and uh, maybe I should disable that. Uh, okay, bullets. I know there's a screen wrap thing here somewhere. Well, there we go, screen wrap. Uh, let's just kill the bullet if it goes out of bounds. 
Nah, nah, nah. We'll just, uh... I'll just comment this whole thing out. Because in the final game, it's not actually gonna work like that. There's gonna be a free roam area. I'm gonna have to do some sort of parallax thing in the background. <laughs> it it started standing still. But you guys see how the um the smaller asteroids go ahead and basically one hit. Each bullet should be doing basically four damage, I believe. And so the bigger asteroids Well not four damage, eight damage actually. So really only the the top two sizes would be immune from uh, multiple hits. Well, not immune, but like, would require multiple hits to take out. Crap, okay, I gotta do a test. One, two, one, 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 two. Two hits for him. Okay. How many for the big one, though? Yeah, opponent, you're right. Uh, let me just see how many hits it takes to get to the center of this guy. One, two, three. Three. There we go. All right, guys. Um, good stream. Uh, Shane, you want to set us up for a raid for someone? Maybe someone who's actually streaming and not, uh, you know, an empty room with a mute on? I'm happy with how this turned out. It, it really shouldn't have gone out this well. Um, I was expecting to be here much longer. I don't even know how long we've been streaming. It can't have been more than three hours. So, a uh, quick shout out to uh, Country Inn and Sweet at freaking Paducah, Kentucky. Because they're the first place I've had with enough internet to actually stream from. Because I've been waiting for like a week to stream again. Uh, okay, fine. If we can play the sound. Job's done. There we go. Job's done. 